Hey, lion. Thanks for that birthday meal. What was it? A lion. Like, an actual lion, or...? No. You know what kind of lion. Are those edible? Did you die? Fair enough. Well, it is Monday, so would you like to talk about a game involving cute little animal people? That would be nice, actually. I do like cute things, even if I'm 10,000 years old. And technically, physically, almost twice that age. My age is weird. Yeah, I'm not gonna talk about that weird-ass shit. It's damn near impossible for me to find the book I want to read. So, let's talk about this game. Mosrita. A game that calls itself... Sword and Whiskers Roleplaying, which it's phrased weird because it has hyphens for some reason, by Isaac Williams, published by Losing Games. Looking at their website, I noticed it has been updated since 2021, which is weird. The website says the game is on Kickstarter, but Kickstarter only leaves a project up for three months, I think? At least when I tried it. The Kickstarter passed, so it's available. You can get the box set on their site, can get a collector's edition as well, and buy a digital edition on DriveThruRPG, which is where I got it, and apparently on Itch.io, which is questionable there. Either way, this game is easy to get, but it's sort of weird to get. Questionable ways, but let's assume it's all on the up and up. First pages are weirdly enough, not a table of contents, but a table of item costs, which seems rather strange placement. This should probably be after the table of contents, and honestly, probably near the back of the book, too. Then, on the pages after are tables about names and carried brick a brock, which I don't know what that means, so these tables should probably be well later, after explaining what all that means. Then comes credits and acknowledgements, which I'm actually pretty happy about this game doesn't seem to have legal bindings like i'm trying to do with saloon or hasbro does with dnd but it does reference a lot of things that inspired the game a few games that i need to put on my review list actually thanks isaac williams for adding more to my list this game says you need character sheets, obviously. Session tracker sheet for the GM, which I assume a random sheet of paper would work. A set of item and condition cards, which this always worries me when games say you need tokens or cards of specific sets. Your standard set of D&D style dice, and note-taking pencils and papers, which is easy enough. Stuff to get, though the character sheets aren't in the books, so bit of an issue there, but whatever. It then explains how to read the book and such, and then gives websites to download the sheets and stuff. Okay, so don't need to buy specific little tokens thank god this game is already getting good with me it's very cheap to play so the guy who made this game deserves donations for making it so cheap it then goes into character creation which is where most of the information for this review will come from now I'll start this out by saying that there's a mouse generator on the website, which is good if you don't have an idea of what you need or 
what you want, or need a bit of a hand. It uses three attributes, strength, dexterity, and willpower, or at least I assume that's what it means, because this only abbreviates each of them and gives a brief description. STR, DEX, and WIL. Honestly, I wish it gave a full name, then abbreviated it, but I can work with this, really. You get your attributes in a classic D&D style. Roll 3d6, then subtract the smallest die. Apparently, it expects you to roll them in order and swap two of the three around. At least, I think so, given this section right here. I don't really care for the roll in order thing, because it really forces you to play in certain ways. Next is HP, Pips, and Background. You roll a d6 for your HP. Makes sense given your what seems to be a classless system and you're a mouse. You then roll for your Pips, which apparently are your currency. You will then compare these to a background table, and then you that'll choose your background. I will say, I get this, since certain classes of people shouldn't come into money and physical power, because that stuff might make life easier than if you had none of it. But I just don't like when a game tells me what to play and doesn't let me decide. This table essentially says, hey, is your shit luck? So you have to play a test subject. Apparently that starts with magic missile. I don't know what that means really because I don't know what this game does with magic. Though, looking at the effects table, I ain't got a clue what some means. I hope it explains it soon. It then sends to get your starting equipment, and says how as well. You got your torches, your rations, and two base items based on your background. A single weapon of your choice it then says to look at your attributes. If your highest attribute is 9 or less, roll on the uh, background table again and take either item A or B. While if your highest is 7 or less, take both. So what if it's higher than 9? T just take the background stuff that you get, I assume. Don't roll again. I don't hate this is sort of gives shit luck players more stuff though it is difficult to understand really i think it needs an example right there to better explain it then goes into birth sign coat and physical details which is says you can roll for or just choose what you want okay some actual choice there. And it's physical dis details and damn star shenanigan. Next page goes into backgrounds, which I am ain't too happy about. 36 different combinations of HP and money, which choose your starting stats and starting gear. If you got shit luck, you're, you roll the same stuff a second time, and it then get items from either one or two. This game explains inventory and how to utilize it, and actually pretty okay with this stuff. It looks pretty interesting as inventory works with a slot allotment thing in your back. Most of items only take up one slot, but some take up two. You can also have items you can carry or wear, but your pack is limited apparently. Kind of neat survival mechanic without having bullshit calculating weight. 
but then I noticed this section here, usage, there's item durability in this game. Luckily, it's per X lose one use, it's roll shit get hit situation, which may be worse. You can repair items and armor for 10% of its original cost per use gauge. I'm not a fan of that. Look at any tabletop RPG and tell me how many people actually keep track of hardness in Dungeons & Dragons and Pathfinder. I'll wait. There's also encumbrance and banking, but these go pretty well into what you'd expect. Book then describes items by typing, which I'm not going to go into. There's essentially six types, and they do different degrees and damage. It then goes into how to play. How it's essentially Dungeon Dragons 5th Edition with opposed rules. Honestly, there's not a lot to this game. Most of this book can be glossed over and you can get the idea. Hell, I literally finished this script talking about how weird the book is formatted. My review is pretty high, 83% though. Because for my complaints, they're still not damning. This is a good game to start a guy in. My major problem is the fact that you essentially get no choices in character creation, and the system is a simplified Dungeon & Dragons, which I expect Hasbro to deal with copyright, then sue Isaac over just because of how that company fucking works. This is a good game for new people, but sort of terrible for an experienced role player, really. But I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get kidnapped Wednesday, Lion. Very likely, given it seems to happen monthly. Yeah, you'd think I'd be more prepared now, but uh, shove off.